be the written word. Anything you find in here that you're to do or not to do, that should be the end of it. <laughs> Boy, this is going, you're going to make me work hard this weekend, aren't you? <laughs> wow, that was really good. Let me, let me just rewind and try this again. Anything. <laughs> I may need a little backup up here. Anything that you read in here that you're told to do or not to do, that should just be the end of it. Thank you. Well, I don't really understand it. Well, then just start doing the parts you do understand. I don't know. What do you think the real interpretation of that is? Well, let's just take something simple like Forgive your enemies, pray for those who hurt you, and bless them. How much interpretation does that need? You know, we're educated way beyond our level of obedience. We got fat heads and lean souls. Information, 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 information. But then when it comes to doing it, we get real dumb. It's like, oh, well, God, what are you really saying there? I don't, I don't, I got it underlined in my Bible, but I'm not really sure that I understand it. Come on, I'm telling you the truth. We're going to close the gap this weekend between lip and life. So first we start by making a commitment to obey the word. Well, Joyce, it's hard to forgive. Look, I know that some of these things are challenging to do, but God promises us that he will give us his grace to do everything he asks us to do. You do not have to do it alone. God will give you the grace, the power, the ability to do it if you really want to do it. You and God are partners. After the new birth, you're, you're partners. God never expects you to do anything without him, but he's not going to do everything for us. He's not going to just give me a gooey feeling of wanting to forgive people that have been mean to me so it doesn't, it's not hard for me. He wants me to want to. And even to be willing to pay a price to do it. You think Jesus didn't pay a price so we could all be here tonight having the freedom that we have? Of course he paid a price. It may not be easy to forgive people that have hurt you, but it's much easier than staying bitter all your life. And God knows that. All right, then we'll just take another simple scripture like, um, believe the best. Oh. Well, you know, sister, I just got a problem with being suspicious. I'm just a suspicious person. <laughs> no, the Bible says believe the best. So then that means that if I've got a suspicious, wicked, evil, fault-finding, critical mind, <laughs> I know none of you have, but I used to have. And if I'm not careful, I can still pick out what's wrong with everything. I got any relatives out there? <laughs> so what I have to do is decide, you know what, God? You don't want that in my life, and I'm not, I am not willing to live like that. Now, it may take me a while to work through it with God, but that's okay. I honestly believe once you set your mind to have victory in an area and you're working with God, I believe he counts it as already done because he sees your heart. Do you hear me? I said, once you set yourself for victory in an area and you say, I'm not willing to live like this. I know this is not what you want for me. I believe that God counts it as already done. All you're doing now is just walking it out. I had to get to the point in my life where I was, I just said, God, I am not willing to live with unforgiveness. I am not going to live angry. I will not live like this. And when somebody would hurt me and I was feeling all that junk, I would just go somewhere and get my Bible. I remember one time getting in a room and I just said, God, I ain't coming out of here or you give me the grace to go out and act like I'm supposed to. I'm not going to live like that. And when you get determined enough 
to be what God wants you to be. Let me tell you something. Everything that he wants you to have is going to be yours because he'll know that he can trust you. Amen. So we start out by obeying the written word, and then we also need to obey the personal promptings and leadership and guidance of the Holy Spirit for our own life. This is something that's between us and the Holy Spirit. And this is an area where we need a lot of teaching, don't have time to do that tonight, but God doesn't lead every individual the same way in everything. Now everything in here, he leads us all the same way, but this doesn't tell me whether to buy a new car or not. It does tell me to use wisdom. This doesn't tell me the exact timing of everything. This doesn't tell me if it's a good time to talk to Dave about something that I know may not be a real popular subject. This doesn't tell me every little detailed particular of every little thing that I need to do, but the Holy Spirit will. The Holy Spirit will. But I tell you, it takes a bold Christian to be led by the Holy Spirit. When you start really being led by the Holy Spirit, number one, you're not going to be led the exact same way that everybody else is, and that's a little spooky. Amen? You're going to have to have some courage if you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit. Oswald Chambers said this. I just read it this morning. At the risk of being thought fanatical, you must obey God. I love that. At the risk of being, do you know if you really make a full-on decision to be obedient to God out in society today, you are going to be thought to be a fanatical religious nut. And you will be judged and criticized and people will not want to have anything to do with you. But the Bible says when we are persecuted for righteousness sake, we are among the most blessed people that exist. And you know, when I say make a decision to obey God out in society, I don't mean you have to act like a, some religious weirdo. That's not what I'm talking about. You need to just get out in society and you need to love people and, and you just need to be godly, not religious, but godly. You don't need to preach to everybody out there. You need to show people the character of God. You need to love them, but you won't be able to do everything they do. You won't be able to talk about everything they talk about, go everywhere they go, maybe see all the movies they see, Keep being an example, but don't compromise to get their friendship. I said, don't compromise to get their friendship. In John chapter 14, verse 15, it's recorded that Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commands. Well, you know, I think that we can look at that as a promise rather than something that makes us feel threatened. The more I fall in love with Jesus, the more I realize how good he is and everything that he's done for me, the more I'm going to want to obey him. And you know, I believe that it's so much better when we do something out of a want to than a have to. I mean, you can do something because you feel that you have to, but I know even like with my relationship with my children, I want them to do things for me because they want to, not because they feel obligated or because they have to. So you might even think about it like this. When you're struggling with disobedience in an area, instead of just trying harder, why not look more to Jesus, fall more deeply in love with him, receive his love for you, and you'll find obedience becoming the natural fruit of that love that you have for God. You know, God's got a good life for all of us, and obedience is really the pathway to get there. God's written word is a good place to start. So study the word, study the word, study the word, Learn to step out and obey the Holy Spirit's promptings. We have a wonderful offer for you today, four hours of teaching on four CDs called Obedience. And it's about following the narrow path to the greatest life. I love that. You know, there's a narrow path and a broad path, and we get to choose which one that we want to be on. Sometimes that broad path is more comfortable for our flesh, 
But the narrow path is the one that's going to produce the greatest life that Jesus died for us to have. And we're giving this to you today for your gift to the ministry of any amount. How does that help us? Well, first of all, it not only helps us, but it helps you. You get the word. And then it helps us with things like paying television bills for airtime, reaching out to hurting people around the globe. We have orphanages and water wells and, and feeding programs and all kinds of things that you can be part of by sharing with us in a generous way. So I like to think about you can give to us, we can give to you. We both get to be blessed. You get the word of God. We get to help more people. And it just puts a smile on everybody's face. So do your very best, send in the best gift that you can. Request these teachings. And I believe that it's going to help you get started on the greatest path that God has for you. By far the most intriguing thing at www.joycemeyer.org is the implementation of a greater retort to query database algorithm, enabling the user to access matrix solutions in a greater capacity. So that's pretty sweet. With the ever-expanding Everyday Answers section of our website, you can get biblical answers to some of life's toughest questions. See what's new at joycemeyer.org. exciting until I get up there <laughs> and then we'll see how it goes it could be good <laughs> you look red with the purple hair that's so awesome Become the bold, confident, courageous woman God intended you to be at the 2014 Love Life Women's Conference as you worship with Israel Houghton Fused Worship and C.C. Winans and hear messages from Ed Young, Lisa Bevere, and Joyce Meyer. Discover the sweet surprises God has in store for you. The 2014 Love Life Women's Conference in St. Louis, Missouri, September 25th through the 27th. Visit JoyceMeyer.org and register today. So what's my hope? <laughs> Why so downcast, O oh my soul, put your hope in God? <laughs> I will remember the breakthroughs that I have had with you, God. And David encouraged and strengthened himself in the Lord God Almighty. And on and on and on and on and on. And he will give his angels charge over you. And in God, you will never be disappointed and put to shame. And pretty soon then, you're thinking, okay, <laughs> I can do this. Because my word has been feeding my soul. When they hear a lady like her telling them exactly where she comes from and where she is now, nobody can tell now that years back she was abused. But look at, at her now. She's blessing millions and millions of people through her ministry. What I like with her is her, you know, openness of just opening her life to the, to the people she's ministering to and know exactly that even where you are, God's word is able to change you. Nothing is impossible with God. Thank you, friends and partners. Together, we're sharing the love of Christ around the world. To find out more, please contact us or visit us online at joycemeyer.org. Join us in partnership as we share the love of Christ around the globe. The proceeding was paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.